Thank you to the American Philatelic Society for their support in the making of this video. For information on membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. So let's talk about pen cancels. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones that has not yet received an envelope in the mail that looks like this. Or maybe you're one of the unlucky ones that has. Pen cancellations have seemingly become more frequent over the years where postal workers will use a pen or marker to cancel the stamps on your mail before sending them on their journey or putting them in your mailbox. And this can generate a lot of discussion on social media. So I want to take a quick look at both perspectives, that being of the flat list and the postal service to get a fair understanding of the situation. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Now, let's start with the flat list. These can be incredibly frustrating for a number of reasons. Part of the buying experience for a stamp collector is not just receiving the stamps in the mail, but receiving them in an envelope with great and interesting stamps used to send them. When I purchase items from stamps.org or eBay or a number of other dealers out there, the items that I purchase are often sent in well-dressed envelopes. It's part of the hobby, and these are potentially collectible, the stamps or the entire cover. Also, philatelists tend to dress envelopes well when sending mail to friends and family or other philatelists. And to add to it, postal services around the world are continually selling us new stamp designs, luring in different markets with pop culture references, flashy graphics, and so on basically encouraging us and non-collectors to purchase these stamps in which many will actually get used in the mail. So when mail does show up with what looks to be a carefree scratch from a postal worker, you can imagine we would get frustrated. It's already annoying that there's no postmark or cancellation, which is a key piece to the philatelic experience. You could say that a pen slashed through stamps without elegance and sympathy is just the icing on the cake. I decided to post one of my pen cancelled stamps on social media to see if any of you would share some of your experiences and examples that you were not happy with. And yeah, there were quite a few interesting ones. So I'm going to share some of those with you, but I must warn you, this can be horrifying. Okay, maybe that was a bit too dramatic. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these. Simon in the UK shared this item. Three stamps, all of which were cancelled poorly. The applicator must not have been well inked. So the postal worker thought that the middle stamp was insufficiently cancelled and gave two slashes through the Hebrides tribute stamp issued in 1986. Also, check the back here. Official Royal Mail reseal tape. This letter was opened or damaged while en route. Ivan in Illinois sent me something that I actually sent him. I had sent a number of viewers stickers that responded to an Instagram post and Ivan's got hit with a red pen. Superman and Abe were murdered by a postal worker's red ink of death. Sorry Ivan. Denise in Pennsylvania sent me this one. Now the sender placed the stamps in the middle of the envelope and perhaps that's what contributed to having the back mistaken for the front in which the return label was treated as the stamp and postmarked. Maybe, but the 29 cent little woman book and the 33 cent congressional stamps were both tagged with a five stroke zigzag in black ink. Eric in the Netherlands sent me this item that was mailed to him from the UK. Two mini sheets got zapped by pen, and I'm assuming it was done by a postal worker in the UK before the item was sent to the Netherlands, but so much English symbolism was attacked here. The three lions, the English oak, and James Bond. Oh come on, I'm sure Bond would prefer his stamps postmarked, not squiggled. George from Stanley Gibbons shared this cover, sent from Canada to the UK. Again, I'm only assuming that it was pen cancelled in the country of origin, but I could be wrong. It is possible that someone in the UK did this. There is a lot of postage here. Each of these 1983 stamps featuring Point Pele National Park are $5, and this beautiful 1997 Grizzly Bear stamp is worth eight, all scribbled over with blue pen. Perhaps the postal worker just doesn't like nature? I'm particularly fond of this stamp and the Canadian Wildlife Stamp Series, so it's sad to see this one all marked up with pen. Interestingly, both the items that George and Simon sent me from the UK came in envelopes where the postage was not cancelled by the Royal Mail, not even pen cancelled. Well, my post office came to the rescue on a couple of these stamps over here. But it brings up a good question, which is worse for the philatelist, a pen cancelled stamp or a stamp not cancelled at all? 
Now, through email and online, Raul shared this item that was sent to him in the US from Italy, a beautiful assortment of stamps that each ended up with one or two pen strokes. This next one is scary, not an issue with pen cancels, but I have to share it anyway. Stanislav in Russia received this item that was sent to him from Spain. Two stickers were placed over the stamps while it was on its journey. The red one seems to have been placed over the single stamp miniature sheet. It's a customs label, wow. And the stamps on the left have a tracking label glued over them. This is too bad because they were actually cancelled appropriately. Bill on Twitter shared this cover. The postal worker gave each stamp a diagonal gash with a black marker. He also shared these two. They had been hand cancelled but slashed with the same diagonal lines, probably from the same postal worker. Why? Eva from the Mail Adventures blog has come across a few pen cancels, but this one that she shared really caught my attention because, because it's King Henry VIII, his six wives, and Queen Elizabeth II. Now, the Henry stamp was already used and just placed on the cover to add to the presentation. Each of the queens were slashed by pen. Some you could say beheaded. And this is historically inaccurate. Of Henry's six wives, and notice they are all placed in the correct sequence, only two were actually beheaded, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard. The others made it out okay. Perhaps the postal worker doesn't like the monarch or doesn't know their history too well, but they spared Henry from the pen. Oh, and one more of mine. This item was sent to me from the UK and it did not survive the trip. It got caught in something and completely destroyed. The contents were lost, but each stamp met its end before the accident. Hit with a blue pen. This actually arrived in a little bag uh, with a sincere apology on it. Now, of course, I could get frustrated and I think I was at the time, but this is now an interesting piece of postal stationery that I am in possession of. And I can't even remember what the stamps were that were being sent to me in the envelope that got destroyed. But let's now take a look at the side of the postal service. The first thing, of course, is volume. Postal services deal with tens of billions of items each year. And while there is a trend for decreasing standard mail and marketing mail due to the Internet, there is an increase in the volume of packages each year as internet shopping is continuing to climb. Automation in postal cancellations is a critical part to the success of postal services. And the general rule with machinery, automation and technology is that it will fail from time to time. It could be a malfunction or the machine doesn't recognize a stamp or it literally just misses the stamp. With these failures, it's then up to the postal workers to manually catch them and have them cancelled. Preferably, this would be done with a proper hand stamp, but in the case where one is not available, say with a postal worker that's actually delivering the mail into the mailbox, they would be required to use whatever instrument is available to cancel the stamps, and that ends up being a pen or marker for most cases. Stamps are tickets. They're not currency where defacing them could be a crime. They are there to be claimed for a single ride in the postal system, and tickets generally get cancelled or torn. When it comes to movie theaters, sports games, amusement parks, tickets need to be claimed or torn or marked in some way so that they cannot be reused. And the same is true for stamps. Why? Because postal services lose a lot of money each year due to postal fraud. You can find articles of people caught selling used stamps that have either not been cancelled or have been washed to remove the cancellation. This is a real problem. Millions of dollars and pounds are lost each year because of this crime, reusing stamps. And this is likely not to go away anytime soon. I took a look through eBay and found sellers offering large volumes of used stamps with cancellation removed, sold in lots for a fraction of face value. They would list them in various ways, but in a manner that made it sound like it was a collector's item. It's obviously not. What's insulting is that these sellers are using us, philatelists, as a cover for their legal operations. They claim that philatelists are the targeted market and therefore they're able to continue listing these items. Now, the Royal Mail and the USPS do combat this. They work with law enforcement as well as come up with new ways to make the stamps harder to reuse. One example is in 2009, the Royal Mail added these ellipsoidal sheer panels to their machins. Basically, the stamps self-destruct when removing it off the paper. Also, eBay has a strict policy of cracking down on illegal activity. It falls under their policies of encouraging illegal activity. But as I mentioned, Philately is the cover that these people use to get away with the operation. Several of them have been caught, but it's the postal service that ends up losing a lot. My thoughts is that the e-commerce world is where the temptation lies to purchase washed stamps. Not the individual that's sending the odd item here and there, but businesses that operate online. For any of you who sell items online, you'll know that shipping is a key contributor to your costs. It adds up, and that price has gone up. 
Using the USPS as an example, the postal rate for a letter has gone up tremendously since the 1970s. But important to note that when adjusted for inflation, the price of the stamp has remained relative to the cost of living. Packages, however, are a different story, and those prices have shot up in an internet era. At the end of the day, whether you are shipping small items that fit into an envelope to your customers or larger items, the price has gone up, and the temptation to cut corners will always be there. This is a problem that the postal services have to combat. Funny enough, washing Postal Inc. off of a stamp is not too difficult compared to the destruction that a ballpoint pen does. Ultimately, the stamps that are cancelled by the final line of defense, the postal worker with a ballpoint pen, are no way reusable. The ink, along with the impression left from the sharp pen, permanently scars it. Am I justifying pen cancellations? Yes and no. <laughs> These are lethal tips. I said yes and no. For Atlas, it is important to remember what the role of a postage stamp is. As frustrated as I get, these items are serving a purpose, to get an item from point A to point B. And postal services have relied on pen cancellations for quite some time. These manuscript cancellations from the earlier years are very collectible items today. Some of my good friends in Philately argue that pen cancellations today say a lot. They are more of a hands-on product of something passing through the mail service. One of my viewers has a great blog where he posted a ridiculous pen cancellation on an already cancelled first day cover. This one just really drives me crazy, but instead of getting frustrated, he thoroughly examined the style and technique the postal worker chose to destroy the stamp. He goes on to note that the pen strokes are almost perfectly parallel to the lines of the book, and that this is one of his favorite covers ever. I'll give a link to Joe's blog post in the description. As I was researching this issue, I came across the USPS Postal Operations Manual. It's available for everyone to read, and under sections 231.3, which discusses cooperation with collectors, you can learn that employees should avoid cancelling stamps by pen or illegible smudging. However, stamps must be cancelled sufficiently to protect postal revenue. It goes on to lay out different rules for different types of philatelic postmarks. Now, the Royal Mail has gone on to echo similar sentiments, saying that pen cancellations do happen as a last resort, although they try to avoid it, and that different shaped envelopes as well as packages may not get the appropriate cancellation by machine. Factor that in with high volume, missed stamps will happen, but the concerns of the philatelist are heard loud and clear. In 2019, India's Department of Post took this way further with a formal letter to all head of circles addressing complaints regarding inappropriate cancellations, including pen cancellations on postage stamps, especially the philatelic stamps. It's quite a powerful letter and a response that I'm sure philatelists will appreciate. Thank you to one of my viewers on Twitter for bringing this to my attention. Now, I do have something to say about this to postal services. This is not going to help the hobby that contributes to your bottom line. Philatelists buy stamps to collect and to send, but when postal items that have clearly had a lot of thought and care into the placement of the stamps and presentations of the entire item miss a postmark and get pen cancelled, you're discouraging us from using the mail and from continuing this great hobby. When a potential collector gets excited about purchasing newly issued stamps that feature a topic of their interest and use them on outgoing mail to friends and family or to themselves to create a collectible item, only to get them pen cancelled, we may just lose a new collector right then and there. Just consider it. The only solution I can offer is better education to postal workers so that they can recognize a philatelic item. Preferably arm your postal workers with an appropriate instrument or have them make a measured decision if pen is worth it. As you claim and recognize in your manuals, consider the philatelist. Now, philatelists, if you're looking to send items in the mail and have them appropriately canceled, walk into your post office and ask for them to be hand canceled. I've done this at post offices around the world and I've seldom run into any issues. Although I have on rare occasion come across a disgruntled employee or someone having a bad day who ignores my requests and just puts my mail aside, but just kindly remind those individuals about this little hobby called philately. And if you're in the US, you could try recite Article 2 231.3 of the Postal Operations Manual. That might work, but if it doesn't, you can report them. Also, if you experience a lot of pen cancellations in your own mail or items that you believe are deliberately sabotaged for whatever reason, you can report those as well. It's something that we have to work with and perhaps work together to resolve. 
So now let's take this to the comments. Collectors, postal workers, new and experienced philatelists. Talk to me and talk to each other. What are your thoughts? Do you care or not care? Do you have any other ideas or best practices you mind sharing with us? I'd love to hear them. As always, thanks for watching and happy exploring.